This time on the show, we're at Maker Fair 2011, and I'm riding a beetle. Go! Yeah! Yeah! Come on! Go! He's a little slow. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express, Domain.com, and Windows Azure. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Of course, your weekly dose of techno less. It's Hack 5. It's not even your weekly dose of techno less because we now have three doses of techno less every week. That's like an overdose of techno less. Kind of is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you guys haven't tuned in, Hack Tip on Mondays and Fridays, little bite-sized snippets of goodness. We'll talk about it later. But, um, but for all those that are asking, like, why am I wearing a hat? <laughs> so you don't have to. So you try to key hair off a of green screen. <laughs> Actually, I think we've got it all on lockdown now. Paul found the most amazing feature for Chroma Key. Really? Anyway, it's going to make the, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. so excited. That's um, pretty cool. I'm excited about this episode. We're like cracking hashes. Oh, We've got too. like password recovery Maker stuff. Maker Fair. Dude, Maker Fair. So much fun. Did you, uh, did you see those like ridiculous walking like chariot thing oh, on yeah. roller skate? Oh, that, that was, was great. That was freaky. And like the gigantic, uh, what was it, a Concord? Yeah. Oh, oh, and then and then not to mention they had this amazing uh, like kind of rave thing going with Tesla coils. That was that. really really yes. fun. Apparently they had one of the MythBusters in the cage on Sunday. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, that's awesome. I wish we could have seen that. Huh. But yeah, good times all around. Yeah. Very Burning Man ish. There's some elements of that outside going on for yeah. sure. Yeah. It was cool. You would know because you go every year. What to Burning Man? Oh yeah, she's a huge she's a huge, huge burner, of course. They probably tuned in for the hacker headlines though, so let's get it started off. Hacker headlines. It seems that the Sony fiasco is never ending, and here is the latest news. Sonet, a subsidiary of Sony and a large Japanese internet service provider, was hacked and customer emails were stolen as well as customer rewards points. That stinks. They say, of course, that it is unknown whether or not the breach has anything to do with the Sony hacks, but I'd put my money on it. 10 bucks, right there. Luckily, there is no evidence that the customer data other than email addresses were co compromised, and on goes all of the Sony yeah. hacking news. <laughs> Actually, including Sony all Music Greece, Indonesia, now Japan, Sony Ericsson, it's hooray for the Sony. You want to make a new TV show? No, what called would it call it? Sony Hacks. Sony Hack of the, Sony Sony Hack of the, the Sony Owned of the Day, anyway. Uh, you want to hear about some other owning? Newegg might be joining the wall of sheep that is plaintextoffenders.com. A Newegg customer, Jerry Asher, writes in his blog about an experience with customer service that ended with a representative giving him his password. What? Plain text. How do they have his password? <sighs> well, Hacker News is actually yeah. reporting that, uh, or, or pointing out that the password could have been maybe stored in reversible encryption. Come on, it begs why even bother at that point? Seriously, like why even use broken crypto like MD5? What's, what's the point? Seriously? Salt people, they're not just for margaritas. Newegg? <laughs> You gotta find out, you gotta check out the, the plain text offenders, it's sad. It's of sad. all it's, the people. It's not just them, it's like JetBlue and it's, it's, every, you know, it's so sick. Wow, yeah. that's just, you know, for some reason I'm not as surprised as I should be. So here's some happy news. Yes, we need that. We do need happy news. A hacking group called Joinable decided to create a service called Joinable to bring voicemail, texting, and email access to those unconnected folks for free. They threw the program together over the weekend, and they really want to hand it off to a homeless shelter to use. The service would be really easy, easy to set up and run, and it could connect prisoners for the ability to hunt for jobs, or it could connect homeless people in need of health care to their health care providers. Good deeds are always a really nice thing to mention in this very technology-driven world, and that's a good thing, I think. Yeah, sorry, I'm texting Paul. Oh, wait, that's right. Our oh, producer yeah. and editor Paul isn't a real have person. A SIM card, no. so we can't really get a hold of him. Yeah, he, well, he hey, could Paul, use this. there's this free service called Joinable that will connect <laughs> you to anybody that you need to be connected to. Get a SIM to. card. Get a SIM free. card. Someone send Paul. Some. But I think anyway. you might have to live in a homeless shelter <laughs> to get it. So. All right. Want to break encryption on an iOS 4 device? Yes. Got 80 bucks? No. Oh, well, Elcomsoft, the Russian uh, password recovery company, has just the software to sell you if you did. It's called Phone Password Breaker, and it cracks the AES 256-bit hardware encryption, huh. dumping the iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch file system, and then goes after the keys with, uh, well, up to 32 CPUs, 8 GPUs, and uh, they're claiming that typical brute force times is somewhere around 40 minutes. Wow. So couple that with, like, end case, and you've got a killer combo for, like, forensics investigators, 
law enforcement, governments, the bad guys. Yeah. You know, it's good stuff. Uh, and here's something for the kitties. kitties? Not kiddies, oh, okay. but kitties. Meow, meow. You know, kitties. Okay. So. Right nerds, okay, well, you know, nerds are am animal lovers, and who doesn't like to play with their kitty or their doggy? I do. This video by Dino shows his creation of a cat and mouse game, literally. Though it seems that his dog is a little bit more interested in the fake mouse than his cat, because his cat just kind of sits there. The video is 11 minutes long, so we'll have a link in the show notes, but we wanted to give you a short little taste of the ensuing hilarity that is a dog chasing a little... I Cotton mouse. <laughs> I, I thought when you you're, you're writing this stuff, you're researching like hacker headlines. You're just watching kitten videos, aren't you? I might be. Admit it. Hackaday, man! I was researching. <laughs> and now it's time for our own kitten video. That's right. It's time for Kirby's binary number of the week. Which one will it be? Do you have what it takes to compete in our Crack the Code Challenge? Brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Test your skills in our private lab network and bid for the title Supreme Elite Hacksaw. Winners will be featured in a future episode of Hack 5. Our next event will be Sunday, June 19th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Visit hack5.org slash challenge for all of the details. We'll be live streaming at hack5.org slash live throughout the day, so I'll see you there. In just a bit, we'll have a walkthrough of our latest challenge, but first, we'd like to take a moment to thank one of our wonderful sponsors, GoToAssist Express, for making this possible. If you provide technical support for clients, colleagues, friends, or family, have you found an easy, cost-effective way without being there in person? Well, the best way for me to provide technical support is to do it online with GoToAssist Express. It lets you view and control another computer on the internet so you can quickly and easily resolve technical issues. I've been able to help friends and family learn how to use new software or fix family computer problems without being there in person. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash hack5. Again, that's gotoassist.com slash hak5 for a free trial. You know how you can store and save all your logging credentials in Firefox, Chrome, as well as other browsers? Well, maybe that's not such a great idea. Yeah, there are several portable, yeah, portable tools that can instantly recover login credentials stored by Firefox, Chrome, and others. Browsers store your username and your password for every single website that you visit as long as you give them consent in the settings. The credentials are saved by Firefox, Chrome, and all the other browsers in a sign-on database that is securely encrypted. Today, I'm going to be focusing on Firefox. FirePassword, the tool in question today, can instantly decrypt and recover the data even if there's a master password protecting it. Not only this, but FirePassword can even recover sign-on passwords for other profiles on the same exact system and all the info from other OSs like Linux and Mac. This can obviously be used for malicious intent, or it can be used for the greater good of forensic investigators who need to transmit data from the target PC to another machine without disrupting the target machine in the first place. Fire Password Portable works from Windows XP all the way up to 7, and it loads DLLs from the Firefox executable location automatically. DLLs aren't packaged with the tool, and the newest version prevent... Let me do that again. Fire Password Portable works from... Win Fire Password Portable works from Windows XP all the way up to 7, and it loads DLLs from the Firefox executable location automatically. DLLs aren't packaged with the tool, and the newest version presents this really easy-to-use color-based display so that you can clearly view password details. So let's go ahead and get started cracking my Firefox passwords. Whew. All right. To install, follow the on-screen instructions over at securityexploded.com. They're really, really nice and detailed down at around the middle of the page or so. So your installation should be pretty easy process and you shouldn't have any problems. They also go through the process of how to actually start it up as well. So once you're installed, you open up your command prompt and you change the directory of your fire password exe folder. It's probably somewhere in your program file, so I'm going to go ahead and find mine. Open up CMD, command prompt, change directory, and I think it's somewhere in my 
program files. Uh, let's see. Yeah, security exploded. That's what I'm looking for. Change directory, security exploded. Fire password. Oops. Okay, so to make this work, all I have to do is type in fire password.exe and then hit enter. And I should see some kind of screen with a whole bunch of different passwords and usernames on here. So fire password.exe, hit enter. All right, there we go. So it shows me a saved host list with all the usernames and passwords. Myself, I only have saved Twitter and Facebook. So you can see my username right there and the password as well, the Kirby123456 or whatever your password might be. It doesn't even have to be something super crazy long or super short. It's, it's still going to figure it out whether or not. It will list every single website, username, and password you have saved. It also lists all the old passwords that you never deleted out of your Firefox settings. So if you've been using the same password for several different sites, might be a good time to change those. Also, if you have a master password set on Firefox, you will need that password to be able to see your other passwords. For example, I'm going to set up a password, a master password on my Firefox browser. So I'll go to tools, options, use a master password. And I'm just gonna make it really easy for the sake of the snubs report. Kirby. Successfully changed, okay and okay. So now to make it work, I'm gonna have to type in firepassword.exe space tac m and then type in Kirby and press enter. Okay, so it gives me a little bit more information since I put in a master password that time, and it also still gives me the same usernames and regular passwords that I have for several different websites. So if I just happened to type that in and I had the wrong master password, so I'll just put in Kirby with three eyes, it's gonna give me a big error code and it's gonna tell me that it's not going to work. I have to have my actual master password. You can also copy the Firefox profiles from different operating systems, such as Linux or Mac, over to the Windows system locally, and then specify that path with FirePassword to recover passwords from all of the offline profiles. It's pretty surprising to me how easy this really is for anybody to discover and how simple it is to set it up. To protect yourself, do what I do, and don't save your passwords in Firefox. Make sure your machine logs off every time you close it or you leave it idle for more than a minute, anything. But really, just, just don't save your passwords. And I already changed those, so don't even try them. It's also worth mentioning the Web Browser Pass View tool from Nursoft. It's a password recovery tool for Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, and Opera. Now, if you've got some kind of other tool for me to check out, make sure to email me at feedback at hack5.org. And now, Darren's here to give us a little bit of information about our hack tips. If you haven't heard by now, we're really excited to announce that we've launched a new show from Hack5 and you've already seen it. Throughout this season, it's been our very own hack tip and it's rocking its own solo gig over at revision3.com, hack5.org, YouTube. Tune in this week because Shannon and I are breaking down standard streams and pipelines in Linux. We're using John the Ripper and Aircrack NG to crack WP encrypted wireless networks. And by the way, the same technique would work against Firefox master passwords just as Shannon had just demonstrated. Anyway, she's also covering virtual desktops for Windows and I'm all over promiscuous mode and packet sniffing for wireless. So check it out every Monday and Friday. It's like consolidated techno -less. You just add water. No, that doesn't sound right at all. How about this? Hack tips. Shurikens for IT ninjas. We'll be back after a brief word from our sponsor. .tv is the best domain name for websites with video. If you want to build a video site or if your website has a play button, I recommend getting a .tv domain. A .tv website lets you showcase your original content and create a unique site, not just another YouTube channel. Just go to domain.com and search for the perfect .tv domain for your new idea. Then use coupon code HAK5, that's HACK5, at checkout to save an extra 15%. If you need to host your .tv website, don't forget about domain 
Booking.com's web hosting plans. They're less than six bucks a month, and they have everything you need to build, maintain, and promote your website. Remember, when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain, Domain.com. Spinning out of control. The lug's been around since 90, 1998, so 12, 13 years. We've got about 250 members now. Half of them are kids, and the other half think they are. Okay, so for the, the Lego guys, and I'm sure this, this you've heard this story, the Lego guys that are, maybe they're adult Lego, you know, uh, players, and, and, and they don't know that there's, like, a, a thriving community of Lego enthusiasts out there. How do you find a, uh, you know, if you're not in the Bay Area, how do you find a Lego user group? Okay, there's a website called Lugnet, L-U-G-N-E-T. Uh, I think it's .org or maybe .com, I don't remember. But uh, there's that, they have a map that shows where all the lugs are in the country, actually around the world. Spinning out of control. Uh, when I was finishing my doctorate, I took up kite surfing, and I was building all my own gear. So this is where you take a giant kite and a board and have yeah. it drag you out in the ocean. Uh, in the infancy of the sport, the gear wasn't that, that good, so I was actually building all my own gear and then documenting it on my personal website. It was taking just as long to write a web page about making a kiteboard as it was to build the kiteboard around 2000. So uh, it was clear to me I needed a better way to document the projects and then share them with other, other people. So I started a design firm and we built the framework of Instructables and then released it. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem with all of these things that the uh, the driver level of the technology isn't quite ready yet. But I think that's actually getting really good now. Does the SketchUp make that any easier? So SketchUp exports EPS files, which are great for laser cutting. Uh, it exports DXF files, which are great for CNC cutting. Uh, sometimes those are used inter interchangeably. And then Collada, it turns out, is a pretty good, uh, pretty good format to get 3D models out for printing. Now, do you have to use like intermediary software to then send it to those those devices, or can you do that straight from within SketchUp now? Yeah, well, it, it turns out this it, it depends on what kind of printer you're going to. But if you're looking at something like a MakerBot, the front end for their device is a, a program called RevG, um, and there's an experimental branch of that now that accepts Collada as the input file, so we can export right from SketchUp into a file that'll read. Last week's trivia question was, including icons for snowmen, octopuses, and alien faces, the specification is the Japanese term for emoticons. And the answer was emoji. Emoji. This week's question is, the cinematic sound cliche, most notably featured in George Lucas's films, has been included in over 200 movies, television shows, and video games since 1954. I know that one. Answer at hack5.org slash trivia to win some sweet swag. And now, a word from our sponsor. Windows Azure is the cloud platform for developers that lets you focus on building and running apps, not infrastructure. It has scalable pay-as-you-go capacity, meaning developers don't have to wait to develop. Get faster speed to market and generate and meet immediate demand. Only rent what you need, when you need it. 
It's a rich platform with built-in connectivity and development tools, meaning you can focus on business logic and get a head start on time to market. Flexible development gives you the ability to run on Windows Azure on your own system. With Windows Azure Burst Capacity, you can deploy with confidence, run your apps where and when it makes sense without worrying about overwhelming systems. To learn more about everything you need to start developing with Windows Azure, check out Microsoft.com slash cloud slash Windows Azure. That just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. No, it doesn't. I'm joking. We got the Crack the Code Challenge. How you complete it here? Take the last photo of the week first. Sound good to me. What do we have? Are we going to switch it up a little bit? Yeah. What? I like it. Take the last photo of the week is sent from Bill God. He sends in three really cool photos of dinosaurs made out of old computer parts that his 12-year-old daughter made. Dude, that is so creative. It's I made love of all of them. She's a genius. Mm -hmm. The Stegosaurus, super cool. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. Dude, like the mother of got names. I was like, too, oh, so cool. Yeah, yeah. Totally super, awesome. Super cool. Yeah. I was Paul was like very... freaking out about them, too. Yeah, me too. Right. I, I want one in my room. Oh. Wouldn't that be cute? Yeah. With the salad. Animatronics, it's all oh. like gonna eat your face off. <laughs> so, Crack the Code Challenge. I wanna <laughs> thank the participants, everybody that like tuned in, watched, uh, uh, signed up to, to play. Did you? It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Leo uh, was the first to complete the challenge. Okay. Uh, I was actually, you know, on. Um, oh, is this? Th yeah, this is yeah, the yeah, one with so the, all, like the back and forth it was, stuff. It was just crazy. It's like a tennis match. Yeah, so uh, Leo was the first one to complete the challenge, and actually, I didn't even notice him doing it because I was too busy watching what was going on between Net Shroud and uh, Zachary. Uh, Net Shroud actually completed the challenge while Zachary put forth a valiant effort. And I'm gonna just go ahead and break down the steps and how you would complete this challenge and uh, well, recover all three checkpoints. Because as you know, Crack the Code Challenge, it's all about the Kirby photos, the oh, yes. JPEGs of Kirby. And the first step is to come in to the actual recycle bin. And hey, there's the readme JPEG. <laughs> I know, it's that easy. You put a picture in the recycle bin. I put a picture in the recycle bin. You know, this Well, tool... you know, it's so easy. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people are just like, where yeah. do I find well, the picture? Typically, uh, the Crack the Code challenges, we've had like some really, really difficult stuff yeah. at first. And so people are thinking like, oh, sniff the network, oh, listen on ports, those different things. And uh, actually, a lot of people got hung up on this because it was just that easy. And yeah. I thought that since there are three checkpoints, I would kind of make the first one really easy. Turns out by making it super simple, it was super difficult. So I gave it kind of, <laughs> I had to give a hint. I was like, they're trashing our rights, man. Trashing. <laughs> anyway. Nice. Um, so if you just open the README, there it is. It's. What does it's, this one say? Number one, hide and sleep, kitty. Checkpoint code. Ooh, yeah, so you get your first checkpoint code, and you know it's, oh, it's, look, a, it's a picture Kirby of Kirby in the, in the box from the old <laughs> hack house. That's so, so cute. Well, I also provide you with everything that you need to complete the Crack the Code Challenge, of course. And uh, one of the tools here is the Exif Tool GUI. So if we fire up the Exif Tool GUI right here, and go ahead and actually uh, drag in our image. Oops, that was the executable. The image, mm -hmm. just open that. You'll see that, oops, there is a bunch of additional information. Now, XF data oh, is the yeah. metadata stored by the camera when you take a photograph. So yeah. it typically has like, to make the model of the camera, you know, the when you took time. the photo, what yeah. the aperture was, what the shutter speed was, all that sorts of stuff. Um, and we're using this to hide a little bit of data. No, this isn't steganography. Well, I guess you could kind of consider it somewhat steganography in the sense that we're hiding something in plain sight, but we're not True, like using but a you're not changing, encrypting. You're not changing the file itself, you're changing the Well, data. yeah, I guess I am changing something in the file, but really it's just the metadata. Yeah. And what I've added here is the model of the camera is a IP address, 1073.31.14 oh. slash ccc14. Okay. Or just slash 14. The make is Crack the Code Challenge. And the image description here, a lot of people didn't realize this. Uh, this right here, if I go and actually edit this, is uh, this is a hash. Yeah. And it is a LM hash that we can use to break into a Windows box. Oh. So I've given them a IP address, I've given them a hash, and really at this point, here, let me just copy this information here. Wrote in Notepad. So we paste it into Notepad, and if you're 
used to looking at a hash like this, you'll notice the colon in the center there. That's actually what's separating this because this is an LM hash or a landman hash. It's a really old one. Nobody should be using this kind of stuff anymore. And we've talked about breaking these numerous times in the past. Yeah. You, you, like, you like that tool, uh, Off Crack. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, you could, you know, fire up Off Crack and try that. In fact, Zachary did. Uh, or what I like to do is use one of the numerous online uh, just cracking tools. So I'm going to select everything for that first colon and I'm just going to pop it into. You know, there's md 5 decryptorcouk there's online hash crack. Uh, this one here is pretty good, just hashcrack.com. So I pop in the hash, hit submit, and it says, hey, that resolves to password. Uh -huh. Password is password. That's funny. So now you have an IP address, you have a password. Yeah. If you actually say pull up backslash backslash 10.73.31.14, you're asked for the username. Well, there's a username that's on most every Windows system, it's administrator. Ah. And in this case, password, which has actually changed. Get to that in a second. And there we go. I've got a CCC4 for, uh, for folder like I expect. And hey, it's another JPEG. Baking kitty. Ba oh, look at her face. And Kirby got into all the baking. She oh. would make cookies oh. and Kirby wants to bake some cookies. Anyway, so you got your I second checkpoint kitty. JPEG. Now, a lot of people then took that JPEG back into the exit tool. Like, oh, what else is, what kind yeah. of data is in there? Actually, if you do that, you're going to find the make and the model. It's like it's a Canon TI2 or XSI or, or something like that. Oh, okay. uh, so there are really no hidden data in this one per se. But right next to it is findkirby.pcap. Wonder what's in there. Okay. Well, you could just go ahead and open this up with, say, Wireshark. And you'll see you have a bunch of wow. TCP traffic in yeah. here. Okay, well, if you're used to these Crack the Code challenges, you understand that all of these checkpoints mm -hmm. are JPEGs of Kirby. So, we just fire up a little so network you're minor look for action. Kirby? Yeah, I have, uh, that's just something there. I have network minor here in my tools folder. And I'm just going to point it at this PCAP file. And what Network Miner is going to do is it's going to make it a lot easier to, to read this PCAP file, this packet capture file, than, uh, than it would be to say go through every packet by hand in Wireshark. Now, poor, poor Netshroud actually wasn't able to because his, his, um, his Network Miner was broken. So he actually was going through hand, uh, by hand in Wireshark, which you can do with some filters, it's not that bad. Um, and if I just come over here to images, I see there are a ton of images. And one of the oh, images, wow. where is it? Should be near the bottom. There we go, it's called complete.jpg. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and extract this. Open image, and there you go, you has completed the Yay! challenge. And you have your final checkpoint code. And that's it. You wow. Know, I, I know, it, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I gotta say, you know, um, Net Trout, he gets to like the second checkpoint by remotely actually, uh, instead of just going in through Samba, mm -hmm. he ended up just remotely exploiting the server using Metasploit, which was installed on, on his VM. And, nice. and then he cracked the LM hash, um, but his network miner was broken, as I mentioned, on his VM. So Zachary, well, he's like on checkpoint one and he's downloading rainbow tables for uh, the LM hashes, because he's going to go about awesome. it that way instead of using like an online tool. Okay. Well, so while he's downloading those, uh, Net Shroud's downloading a new version of Network Miner, still doesn't work. He's gotten like DLL errors. So, so Zachary, oh. well, Zachary cracks the password using the rainbow tables that he downloaded for off crack, and he attempts to reboot the server using <laughs> an IP scanning tool that he had downloaded, okay. uh, remotely reboot the server that was hosting, or shut down the server that was hosting this PCAP file. Uh, but uh, it was so exciting because, you know, um, NetShroud had already made it in with, uh, with Metasploit, so he just changed <laughs> the password to Zach. Oh, Four dude. letters, I know, right? Oh. So thus thwarting his reboot attempt, and then it, uh, it, he continued to just like comb through in Wireshark, using a couple of filters by hand trying to find the JPEG, like where I actually got it from. I think I like hosted it on Twitterfisher.com or oh, something okay. like that. Um, but then Zach broke the password and shuts down the server. Aww. <laughs> but it's too late because because uh, Netshroud had remoted back home with Metasploit, downloaded the PCAP, ran through tools at home, and then he uploads, and we're like, what is he uploading? And boom! Wow. He has the JPEG, and Netshroud had completed the Crack the Code challenge, oh. despite all of Zachary's efforts. And it was really, really, really cool. It was exciting. Match. Yeah, it was so cool. So <laughs> thank you guys all for participating. That was like a lot of fun. And uh, 
Yeah, yeah definitely uh, head over to hack5.org slash challenge because that's where you can find all of the ways that you can get involved in the next one. You can watch videos about the previous ones that we've done. You can get the old files too, You can get right? the old files and crack them at home. A lot of, uh, cool. some of them, you know, well, anyway, just, just head over there. You'll find all the good stuff. Mmm, deliciousness. Yes. Uh, well, I think we're about done here. We've got a few things to yeah, we've got, go over, but... Yeah, plenty of episodes, but uh, yeah. Remember, you can always uh, support the show free and very simple by subscribing on iTunes or YouTube. I download the show on iTunes myself at home. Yeah, it's good stuff. Also, yeah. you can get yourself some Hack5 goodies. Uh, now we've got the Ubertooth shipping. It's over at hakshop.com. Yay! Finally. Yeah. Love the Ubertooth. Excited about that. And you can always follow us on Twitter and Facebook to get all the most up-to-date news on Hack5. Yeah, I, I just Twitter a lot. Just joined the Facebook thing. Did you? Yeah, I converted Did it you over to me a, as a friend? page public person thing, and now I have a... Yeah. Oh, I totally sent you a friend request. And you can always sign up for our next Crack the Code Challenge with GoToAssist Express for, be a lot of fun. let's see, Ju June 12th, I yeah, think is the next one. it's going to be exciting. Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah. Yay! Got some good stuff for that. Anyway, until next week, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your Technolust. It vibrates when you touch it. It's a, it's a haptic tip. When you touch it, it vibrates. Each. <laughs> we'll throw this at you. Oh! Me. The co no, that's not it. That's a different show. What are we doing? <laughs> Son, I really want to go shopping. See. I'm, I'm just going to take these and, and go to Burning Man, and I'm just giving up. <laughs>